Hey guys, I uh, wanted to uh, do a quick little video here. Um, me and the dog are out here on the porch again, and uh, I want we're gonna do we're gonna do another video on the slingshot series. Um, the series isn't gonna be as long as I would like to, to have as I, I wanted it to be. I contacted a few companies, um, hoping that maybe they would donate a slingshot so that we could like play around with some production slingshots too. Um, didn't really work out. Nobody seemed to be interested. Um, my channel is probably not big enough is what the problem is. So the series is going to be kind of limited. We, we're going to, we're going to try to, uh, we did the, the blacksmithing, a, a basic slingshot. I may blacksmith a more, um, fancier slingshot. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But uh, for today, we're gonna we're gonna whittle a basic whittle slingshot, and uh, I'm just a basic old tree fork. Um, and then we're gonna we're going to do another video where we whittle a more or carve, I should say, a more fancier slingshot, probably out of a Y too, but it'll be a bigger, thicker Y where you got to carve the whole thing out. And then come this fall, we're gonna we're gonna add some videos into the series with um, hunting small game and stuff like that. But I will have to go out of Ohio to do that if I decide to do it. Uh, Ohio laws kind of suck on that. Uh, I think you can't even go rabbit hunting with them. So uh, you know we're gonna play around with the series a little bit. Uh, I may use my own money and buy a couple production slingshots just to play around with those a little bit too, but uh, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Um, we are going to do a video on making up bands and putting everything all together and tying it on a slingshot too, but that's later on down the road. So anyways, this video is going to be about tree forks and uh, you know, you can find tree forks anywhere. Um, over the weekend. I probably picked up probably 50 tree forks and I did it in about an hour's time and I got lucky I was over at my parents house and we were cutting firewood and um, here in Ohio the ash trees are really bad with the uh, emerald ash borer so a lot of the ash trees are dying out well that's what we were cutting down and cutting up was ash trees and when we got done with for done cutting for the day, I uh, just went around with all the brush and started cutting tree forks for myself. Um, so you know, I, I it's it's an easy thing to get your hands on. You know, any tree fork will work as long as it's not too awful narrow or too awful you know wide or whatever. Um, you can even get them green if you want and bend them the way you'd like to with a little bit of heat. And I, I do a little bit of that myself. Um, but anyways, I ended up getting, I, like I said, probably 50 or 100 tree forks for, you know, in an hour's time. And it didn't cost me a dime. And all you guys got to do is, you know, if you live in the city or something, when the city guys are cutting trees down or whatever, you know, just kind of keep your eye out for them. Um, you, can, you can find them fairly easily. Um, anybody trimming trees or anything like that, you, you might be able to get your hand on a couple. You might not get your hand on 50 in one day, but, you know, we cut a lot of firewood here, so that makes a huge difference. I heat my whole house on firewood, so I'm always cutting it. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to carve a tree fork today, and uh, it's going to be real basic. And then, uh, you know, that's about it. Uh, so anyways, we got to pick one out, and when you pick a tree fork out, you just got to pick out one that kind of feels good in your hand, and uh, that's all you got to do, and I got a neighbor coming over with a four-wheeler. So anyways, let me get one of these tree forks picked out. Oh, by the way, if you cut tree forks and you're cutting them green, you want to cut them extra long, everything extra long, because uh, eventually it's going to dry and crack. A little bit and uh, you don't want that to happen so you just cut them long and then you can 
do whatever you need to do with them. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and pick one of these out and we'll get started. It'll be your place. Okay, for easy, 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 easy slingshot, I picked out a tree fork that already basically fit my hand. You know, how, how I like to hold it, or you know, you can hold it several different ways. And it's almost already to size, so that makes it really easy to, to carve. So now you can get as fancy with it as you want. Um, you could go as basic as knocking off all these little branches, cutting it to size, and putting your bands on and you're done. Or you can you can remove all the bark and make it look kind of pretty and all that stuff. And I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and remove all the bark and make it sort of pretty. Um, when I am measuring to, for the final cut on my on my forks, I usually hold it kind of like the way I want to hold it, and then I figure I want to cut it like like say right here and right here and probably right here, and then that's where I make the first cut on, on them um, then after that when you're when you whittle it down and you start you know playing around with it a little bit and this and that you can fine-tune the length on the forks a little bit more if you want them to shorten them up and stuff so I have I have slingshots where the forks are cut like this short and, it, and they feel great to me you know you kind of hold them like this and uh, you know, it just depends on how, how you feel, how it feels like you want to hold it after you get it all done. For me, it's all about the feel. You know, the more more comfortable it feels, the more accurate you're going to be with it. And uh, so, that's like, I like the curved end. If, this, if it's an offset slingshot like this, I like the curved end at the top because it feels like my hands just kind of sort of wrap around it like that. And then there's probably a lot of people that would rather have it at the bottom because then they can put their thumb right there and hold this with all four fingers. Just depends on uh, what you want to do. And basically, you could set this up to go either way just by notching both sides of your forks for when you're tying the bands on. And then if you want to go this way, you tie the bands on one way. If you feel like you want to shoot it this way the next day, you tie the bands on the other way. That's totally, totally up to uh, whoever's shooting the fork. But anyways, so first thing I did was I kind of kind of set it up and I put a notch here and a notch here and a notch back here where I want to cut it. So that's, that's the first thing we'll do is we will go ahead and cut this thing to length. And uh, I'm just going to do it with a basic tree saw and uh, then we'll go to the next step. Okay guys, so now, now I have my slingshot cut the length and I may shorten it a little bit more as I go, but for right now this, this is a good length to uh, start out at. And uh, a couple things you want to remember when you're cutting these is you want this, this end and this end to be nice and square with each other because when you aim it, you're going to be aiming it like this. You want these nice and square and when you pull your bands back, you want your bands to line up so that it looks like you only see one band. So uh, that's, that's one of the basic things to remember. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and peel all the bark off of it. I'm not gonna do it on camera. It's a pretty simple process. Um, if you wanna be done with it, like right now, all you gotta do is, I already started, I knocked this knot off and I gotta knock a couple knots off the ends of these. And uh, You could just you could just clean up these ends and round them off so that there's no sharp corners. Put your bands on and you're done. But we're gonna go ahead and peel the bark off and uh, kind of make it look sort of pretty. Um, one other thing I wanted to add: I said that you can make a tree fork out of any kind of wood, out of anything, as long as a, a Y or whatever. Well, that's true, but it's got to be hardwood. Um, there are some people who make them out of pine and stuff, but. Uh, Really, you want a nice piece of hardwood that's a natural fork, and because uh, some some softwoods are just way too soft for it, so kind of stick to the hardwoods. Uh, I didn't mention that in the other ones. So I wanted to go ahead and mention it in the other segment. Um, so, anyways, let me go ahead and uh, we will today. We're going to we're go, you know what? Let's use some of my hand forge tools today. Um, let me go get them. Okay, so for today's project, 
we're going to take the take the uh, bark off this, and we're going to clean up these knots and just just kind of make it look pretty. Um, basically, I'm just going to use one of my whittling knives that I make on my website, and I have a small draw knife that I uh, use as a small little draw knife. It uh, actually is becoming one of my favorite little draw knives that I own. And then my one of my uh, regular full-size mock toggles, um, which are also listed on my website. Sorry guys, gotta put that in there. But anyways, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is just, just start cleaning the bark off this thing. Um, this is dry um, ash, so it's not the easiest stuff in the world to to um, whittle, but it, it's not it's not bad either. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, clean this off, and we'll clean these knots knots up, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with that. These one-handed draw knives are really slick. If I was gonna take one thing out in the wood, that would definitely, well maybe not one thing, but this would definitely be one of the things I would take. Okay, let me go ahead and finish show. Uh, cleaning this thing off and uh, taking these knots off. Um, let me get up here close. If you're taking these knots off and you're having trouble with them because knots tend to be very hard, the trick is to take them off in sections. Don't try to take the whole knot off because it just doesn't work real good. But if you try to take it off in sections, It usually comes it's usually not so bad and then once you get down to a certain level to where you're just skinning the top of it you can take it off fairly easily and then you just you got no more knot um, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and do that and if you're doing a bow you don't want to take the knots off at all but that's a whole different video Okay guys, we're back. We got it. We got it all cleaned up. All the barks off of it. Um, now it's just a matter of uh, how pretty do we really want to make it. Um, I'll probably take a piece of sandpaper and hit this with sandpaper. Uh, if this was a wooden spoon, I probably wouldn't. But I kind of like the carving on it. Um, I'll probably hit it lightly. I, I still like the carving marks in my slingshots. I, I think it gives them a little bit of grip. Makes them feel nice. I, ju I just, it's something I prefer to do. Um, so now it's, it's basically up to you. Uh, what do you want to do with yours? Do you want to make it uh, real pretty or just put the bands on and make it shoot? Well, if you want to put the bands on it and make it shoot, first thing you need to do is you need to take the ends and round them off, the edges, so that you don't have a sharp edges on there. Usually once I do this, then I'll take a piece of sandpaper and go around them too, just to blend that edge in and make it nice and smooth. And uh, it's relatively simple to do. Anybody with a little bit of carving knowledge can do it. But basically, you just you just go around the edge. 
and knock it off. You do that all the way around there until you get it nice and rounded. And like I said, then I usually take a piece of sandpaper and just go around it one more time with the sandpaper and that makes it a nice smooth, smooth edge. Um, anyways, let me go ahead and finish that and we will get back to, to the video. Okay guys, we're back. I went ahead and all the bark's off, it's all sanded. I went ahead and rounded these off real quick. Rounded the bottom off real quick. I actually did that real quick on the belt sander. Um, and then sanded it by hand some more. Uh, so it's all done basically. I uh, These are all lined up nice and square. Um, so the next thing, there's only one more thing you really gotta do. And that is to mark which side you want it to be the front side and which side you want it to be the back side now me I'm gonna hold it like this so this side over here is gonna be my front side so I want to flip it around to my front side and I want to take a pencil and make a mark and I usually mark about a half an inch or so down on both of these I eyeball it I don't get too fancy with it I eyeball it so that I have a mark mark up here and a mark down there and it's really light so Like that so then what you want to do is you want to take your knife and you just want to put a notch right here and a little notch there don't want it to be too deep um, if I was to guess maybe eighth inch deep and maybe an eighth or so wide and basically all that's going to do is when you tie your bands on which we're going to do that in a different video but when you tie your bands on you can uh, go ahead and Put the ties in that groove it'll keep them from sliding off and stuff and you can tie them on with whatever you prefer to tie them on to I usually just uh, I use TheraBand gold bands and then I turn around and I tie my slingshot blades or my slingshot bands on with little strips of TheraBand gold you know just to tie them back on with um, it's just what I have I always have little strips of it here so that's what I use to tie them on and it seems to work really good and it holds them and uh, you know so uh, let's go ahead and put those grooves in which is very easy all you got to do is basically just take your knife basically just take your knife on a little bit beside the line and go in take your knife on the other side of the line go in and just pop that chunk out and then you just, you, you, you can do it several times to make it as wide as you want and as deep as you want. And, uh, you know, basically it's just there to catch, like I said, the band a little bit. And then when I get done putting this groove in usually I take a piece of sandpaper fold it in half or a round file actually works good too fold it in half and then I uh, go ahead and clean these up so uh, let me go ahead and finish these and I'll show you what it looks like when they're done okay so I got the uh, notches in there just a little bit and if you were and this is a little trick uh, I'll show you if you want to make it really easy Give yourself a round rasp and you take it I'm gonna st do it standing up but you shouldn't do it standing up because it's kind of harder but you could take it and you can put line it up to both grooves at the same time just like so and then and run it on there and like I said I, I, I need to be sitting down to do that but what you're doing what you're doing then is you got your space from the top to the groove the same on both forks and when you're running it across there, the both grooves will be lined up exactly perfect. And then you just file it until until you get it to the depth you want. And I usually take it and I sort of file it around the slingshot a little bit too only partially
until I get it the way, the way I want it. Then, I happen to have a little sanding block, and I go ahead and I just, I just hit it with the sanding block. I just put the corner of the sanding block in there and just file it, and it takes off any, any little burr or anything that might be on there. And then you're basically done. You have a slingshot frame ready for bands, and that's what they look like. When you get the grooves on there, like I said, I go kind of around it just a little bit, not a lot. And so you, you hold it like this, you attach your bands to this side. That way you, when you pull it back, your bands are bending around the fork and back towards you. And that's the way you set that up. And we will do that on a different video um, when it comes to putting bands and stuff on your slingshot. But for right now, we're going to end this video right here. And I'm just going to say, um, oh, um, another little thing I'm going to put in there is that you can buy these frames already put together with the bands and everything um, set up on my website. I will say that I have several different kinds of slingshots on there that you can buy, but my bands all come at eight inches. So when you, when you buy my slingshot, you'll have to take the bands off and set it up for your draw length so you can get the maximum power out of those TheraBand gold bands that I put on there. So that way you can actually use these for small game hunting hunting them and stuff like that anyways these are available on my website the frames I have some natural frames I have some uh, cut out frames out of like regular hardwood and I'm going to be doing some uh, frames out of Baltic birch here pretty soon too I'm just working out the designs uh, on on those and then they'll start going on there too um, the last thing that you want to do with this thing is I usually give them a coat of linseed oil and okay guys um, I'm back I wanted to add one little last thing to this thing I, I went ahead and I coated the linseed oil it uh, is all done you can see the the oil really makes the knots pop puts it add some real color to it <coughs> um, but anyways it's all done um, in reality it probably only took me about an hour to make this and uh, these are available on my website. So if you want to purchase one, you can. Um, they'll come with Therabold, eight inch Therabold, Theraband gold blades, or bands. And uh, anyways, they're, they're on there. I got several, several different kinds listed, like I said before. And if you're interested, just go take a look. Um, the website is uh, primitivehunter.net and the Etsy shop, which I actually have a few more on the Etsy shop than I do the website, is uh, Primitive Hunter. And uh, I only make them occasionally when I can keep them in stock. So if they're there, they're there. If not, they'll be there within you know a few weeks or so. Um, these are actually pretty good sellers. Um, I 20 bucks for one with bands on it and uh, plus shipping. And uh, you're you're good to go. I mean, these will these will hunt small game with the if you uh, adjust those therabands to your draw length, um, and you got to be in a state that allows it. So, anyways, I just want to say thank you. Like, share, subscribe, um, share the heck out of my videos. I'm really trying to build up the channel, and uh, I just want to say thank you. And I'll talk to you guys later.